Welcome back to Bookview Now. I'm Jeffrey Brown of the PBS NewsHour here at the McCormick Place in Chicago for Book Expo America. And I am joined now by George Saunders. Welcome back to talk to you. Nice we talked to be a few here. years ago. We did. And we talked then about your what you what you have been best known for up to this point, which is short stories right. and that uh, wonderful collection, 10th of December. But now, I hear, you got a novel. I do. I actually sort of had it then. Uh, it, oh, was, you did. it was at home. You were in, you weren't you weren't telling it. Yeah, I was withholding. It was at home in kind of a shambles, and I wasn't sure that it would it would work. But yeah, so I I had um, many years ago. I think during the Bill Clinton administration, uh, we were driving through D.C. and my wife's cousin pointed up and said, "Did you know that when Lincoln was president, his son passed away, 11-year-old son, yes. and he was buried in that crypt right up there?" And that was news to me. And then she went on to say that he Lincoln. Uh, had been reported in the papers that he had he had gone in there and held the body several times. He was so grief stricken that he'd held the body, yeah. and this was sort of during the height of the Lewinsky stuff. So Clinton was very much barricaded in the White House, and I thought, what a thing, you know, that that Lincoln could leave the White House by himself, uh, maybe several nights in a row, and that he would choose to go and you know and, yeah. and sort of address his grief in this way. So that image, uh, it, you know, the image of kind of like the the Lincoln Memorial and the Pieta, you know, Lincoln with his child. Yeah. Uh, it just got in my head. But, uh, but it, I, I, love, yeah. I love the way you're telling this story because it sounds like one of your stories in a way because you brought in Monica Lewinsky. And right, Bill right. Clinton yeah, it was a very mixed to, mode story, yeah. yeah. But, and the Pieta. Right. Yeah. So at the time, I just didn't, I, I didn't, I kind of knew I didn't have the chops to take it on. It, you know, uh, I was a little, at that time, maybe, Everything was satirical, I, I think, or somehow I just knew to stay away from it. So it took me all these years to kind of come back to it. And then right before 10th of December came out, I thought, you know, I, I, if I'm 55, whatever, if not now, when? And yeah. it, it felt like one of the artistic crossroads where you think, well, I could decline to do it. That would be safer. But then thereafter, you'd be sort of an enacting artistic death yeah. if you didn't try it. But, but was the it that that particular story, or that as a novel? It it was how to uh, how to address that story at all, you know. And in fact, one of the things that happened was I I think I'd had several kind of terrible abortive novel stories before that, you know. And so I was very gun shy about it. And I developed this idea that you never try to write a novel or try to do this. You just come to the story and see what it wants you to do, and mm. almost be a bit like a bouncer, you know, like, uh, so you say you're a novel. I don't think so. You know, <laughs> go out, go, come back, and, and uh, in this yeah, case- Yeah, but you it, were quite a bouncer. I mean, you, you, I, you've been saying that forever. I have, yeah, yeah. and it always felt that way, and, in, and I have a feeling it might go back to that, but this particular story, it was almost like a, a switch metaphors, but from a bouncer, it was like a, a, someone, a suitor, you know? Yeah. I love you, and you say, I, no, go away, come back tomorrow. And if it comes back 20 years in a row, you think, all right, now I got to try it. So um, when 10th of December was about to come out, I just thought, all right, I've got some downtime. Let me just have, give myself six months of pure goof. If it doesn't work, no harm done. And in that time, enough happened that I thought, yeah, I think this could be really beautiful. You know? But again, beautiful as a, as a novel, or, or you weren't sure at the time? I, I was, and I wasn't yeah. sure, and I was saying to myself, don't start getting that little bit of a mental addiction to the idea of a novel right. because then you start bloating it. You know, you start expanding. You think expansion and my natural mode is to think contraction. Yeah. So basically, I, I struck a bargain which was I will try to, you know, get to the emotional core of this and make it beautiful book but you have to agree not to um, have too much vanity and try to be longer than you need to be. You know, so between the two things, it's it's actually only about uh, sixty thousand <laughs> words. This is you talking to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to my world. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so then it became kind of like, all right, we're going to work together to find the essential beauty of this thing as quickly as possible. Uh, and if it turns out to be seventy pages, God bless it. Three thousand, God bless it. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I went back to the transcript from our conversation in 2013, and of course we were talking about the genre of short mm -hmm. stories because, in part because we don't talk, at least I don't talk about it enough. Right. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and um, you're such a master of it, but you said, for me it's almost neurological. Yes. That that's the way your brain works right. in a sense. And it is, and actually I had a big moment in this book because I kept waiting for it to feel novelistic. You know, I have friends who are novelists and they talk about, you know, the characters come alive and they, uh, all these, things that I assumed had never happened for me as a story writer. 
And then the big day was when I went, you know, I, I've been building these little structures for years. I'm not going to suddenly sprout a new set of tools. So what I'm doing is sort of retrofitting the tools I have, which are minimization, compression, yeah. uh, and I'm just so, putting it on a bigger frame, sort of, you know. I mean, example, I, I came up with it, you know, yeah. I, you build yurts your whole life, custom yeah. yurts, and then somebody commissions a mansion. Well, maybe you can link the yurts. You can put a bunch of yurts together. So in the end, it felt like it was no different, really. You know, the same basic aesthetic, same well, that's So in the end, once you started at it, you didn't worry about it. I didn't, no, and especially about halfway through I thought, yeah, the same instincts you've spent your life developing, those are the ones that are going to get this thing done, so don't worry about some new novelistic toolbox uh -huh. showing up, that's not a thing, you know, uh -huh. and... Uh -huh. and uh, so, I mean, so at this point, does the distinction not, not even matter to you? But when we last talked, it seemed to matter, or at least yeah. maybe I yes. was putting no, that right. frame on you, um, because you hadn't written Right, that was novel. sort of my rationale. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> neurologically not suited to it. But then you think, well, okay, well, you actually, even, but you even said it's like I get to a certain point, and then I'm kind of. I think you used the word lost. Yes. Like you yes. know, after a certain point in the story. You know, on this yeah. one, I think what might have helped was that I knew I had a very, very simple outline, which basically is just okay. We know, and I'm an engineer, so I think. Lincoln comes to the graveyard, we know he doesn't stay there, mm -hmm. therefore he leaves. When and why? W Willie is dead. Now he's present in this book in ghostly form. Uh, I always knew that he wasn't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Somehow that his, his job was to go on to the next thing, but he was hung up as a lot of people in the book are. All right, so then the question is, why is he hung up? Does he, is he able to leave? So just with those simple questions, a structure presented itself. Mm -hmm. So then it was, it was still short story logic in that yeah. everything had to be told as quickly as possible. Yeah. It just took me longer to do it, I think, you know, but. This book isn't coming out for quite a, still a while. Right. Uh, you're not still playing around with it, are you? No, we're, we're uh, I'm getting one set of edits back just to kind of proofread it and then we're, then we're done. Is it hard for you to let go of a? It's very hard, because I loved being inside this book so much. I, it was always presenting new, um, surprising moments, you know, and mm -hmm. also it was such a, um, I think because of the historical element, it was so, especially at this time in our politics, it was so enriching to be able to be forced to go back to Lincoln day after day. Well, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. I mean, so you did. You did a lot of research. I did a lot. I did kind yeah. of, I would say it was more um, just reading as widely and weirdly as I could in that time and in his, mm -hmm. uh, his writing, so that if I, and in the book, I do have to kind of imitate him at places. So then I would have enough background to sort of do that confidently. Uh, so that was really wonderful. And I, w I have real postpartum, even now, you know, I just, I, I don't, I think the book, I don't want to do anything more to the book, but I wish I could do it again almost, you know, it was very, very wonderful. <laughs> of course, wonderful. the movie Lincoln came out too, right? Did that, it, well, did that, you know, did that play into i uh... I'd been working on this so long, I, I had the idea, I'd had the idea and was writing a play about for 10 years, and then I heard that Spielberg was going to make a Lincoln movie, yeah. dreaded it, saw it, loved it, and then it was another six years after that. So, it, oh, you know, no. kind of, <laughs> with have, Lincoln, there's always something new to say. I have, think. Your, uh, have your routines or regime, regimens changed as a, as a writer, especially as you move to a longer form? The only thing that changed was more, uh, our, our daughters grew up and left home, so my wife and I have more time, and so I, I think I spend more time I know time how that works. It. It's yeah. kind of nice. Huh? It's kind of nice <laughs> yeah. after the first three year, months of feeling useless. Yeah. So I think it, it's adjusted that way, and, and that was very um, serendipitous for this book because mm -hmm. I had long days where I could work intensely on the prose, and then when I started to get tired, I could switch to the research portion. Yeah. So some days I, I was you know working all until two, and then reading until midnight, and everything started to feel like it was feeding into the, the book. So, but I think, basically, I can't write very sharp prose for more than, you know, three hours. And I'll, I'll, I'll write sharply for three hours, then mess it up for the next three, so I've kind of learned to. <laughs> you were telling me before we started that you'd never been to a book expo? Never, never. never. So what are, what's your um, what's your impression? I've been asking some of the writers here. Of, uh, it's, it's, well, it's kind of over, I, have, I used to come here for the car show. I grew up in Chicago, and, but it's kind of overwhelming and really. You all used to come to McCormick Place. McCormick Place, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, I, I'm really encouraging so many readers and so many uh, enthusiastic 
you know the booksellers you meet. It's kind of wonderful. I just I didn't know it existed, but it's kind of a little yeah. overwhelming. It sort of makes you want to run back to your writing room and pretend that all those other books don't exist. Well, that, see, that's the other yeah. part I was thinking about. Yeah. I mean, it is it's energizing, and oh my goodness, look at all these readers, and then you say, oh my goodness, look at all these books. Yeah. You know, that uh, you know, as a writer. What what I kind of felt is that in you know like your um, pretty good motivation is to write something that will get noticed. Well, you come here and you go, yeah, that's not a really a solid. <laughs> so the, the higher motivation is to write something that enlivens you, you know, uh, which for me, this book really, it really, it was one of those rare occasions where what you're working on turns out to be exactly what you're wondering about, you know, and that was really, a, a, I felt like a blessing to be able to go in and do your work that somehow wasn't separate from your actual hopes and fears and spiritual concerns. It was just all one thing, and that was really wonderful. You know. All right, it's Lincoln in the Bardo. Lincoln right? in the Bardo. Yeah. George Saunders, nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you, always.